really good. So uh, on to Okro Square. Uh, for this one, it is the week for doing the acorn blocks on background B. So uh, acorns on background B. Uh, last month was, or in, um, yeah, well, I guess it was October um, or September. It was the mushrooms. Uh, you don't have to have them pieced into the center. I do all my piecing um, into the actual blocks and the rows at the end, although sometimes I do like parts of it as I go along. But if you want to jump ahead and like put that together, go for it. Um, I do have all of my mushroom blocks here. Um, the center of my quilt is going to be with the washed linen, then the buttermilk. And so it's a kind of a softer color center. And then I get to the brighter colors on the outside. So I've got my mushrooms that I got finished. And when it comes to cutting the background for the acorns, uh, the pattern does call for a lot of these things where you have um, a lot of one and a half inch squares or a lot of one inch squares. When I cut my strips, that's where I'm really utilizing my stripology ruler a lot. And so I will put this down and just like run through the one inch um, pieces really fast. I also really like to cut the largest sizes first because then what I do is I look at this piece of leftover fabric and I'm going to cut some of these other let's say squares and things from this leftover piece. And then that's gonna save me fabric as I'm going down. So I do like to cut the bigger pieces, then take the ends of those and get some of these smaller pieces out as I can, just for the best efficiency of things. And on this pattern, because it's, you know, with market and other sewing, it's been a while since I looked at it. And so the first thing I did is I said, okay, I'm making acorns. Which fabrics are acorns? Okay, I can see. These two fabrics are the acorns. These are the pieces that I'm gonna be cutting. So really easy. I don't have to you know, look at the rest of the things in here to be cutting that. I make my piles. If I don't wanna label all my background pieces, then I will cut them in order and I will stack them in order so that it's easy for me to go through the stack and know sort of where that measurement is because I went in order and I can look on the list and figure out where it is on the stack. So this just a little tip if you don't label. Uh, as I'm doing my acorns, the first thing I'm going to do with an acorn, there's, there's three sizes of acorns, the large, the medium size, and the small. Um, I'm going to make one block in that size so that I make sure that I'm making the correct sized um, acorn and that everything's coming out together because there are different size blocks and backgrounds and like corners. I want to make one, I want to measure that block and make sure that like this is coming out the way I want it to be. So I am making my acorns, once I've made one block and made sure that like my measurements are correct. I usually work, this is my own method and you might have your method, which is, you know, fine, do whatever works for you. But I usually work where I am putting all of my stitch and flip corners onto the bottoms, right? And so I just sew on both ends at the same time. If I'm making too many different sizes at once, I sometimes get a little confused and I'll find that I have sewn it on horizontally as opposed to, let's say, the, the shorter end of the piece. You know, I'll get a little confused. So if I work on one size at a time, it's easier for me to know, like, I'm always putting it on this end. And if I sew these pieces on first and I have them all lined up, I can see right away if I've made a mistake. The same thing with the top of the acorn. I'm putting it on horizontally. I've got the larger piece at the top, the bottom pieces um, that are smaller at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and just sew all of these on at once before I trim them. So I am able to just chain stitch through the machine to do like one corner, all the other corner, all the bottom corners. And so I end up with a piece that looks like this. Then I'm going to go ahead and just snip my corners, right? And I would then press these with the iron, but I'm finger pressing for you. So there's my top. So I'm going to go ahead and an assembly line and make all of the large acorn tops this way. 
I'm also going to do the same thing where I make all of the stalks and the same thing for the bottoms. I make all of the bottoms. I sew all of the pieces on like this. Then I go through and cut them off and press them. All right, so those are gonna be my, my stacks that I have of the three. I add my stem to the top. And again, I do this, all of them at the same time. So I'm not confusing. The big one is at the top, the small one is at the bottom. I wanna make sure because this is gonna match up with the sides here. Also at this stage, I take this piece that I've done for the body of the acorn and I add the two sides. And it's important that you have to add the two sides now or it's not gonna line up right. So I'm gonna join my top with the stem and I'm going to add my two sides. Then at this point, when I am joining these two together, if I need to, I can put a pin in here to check that my seam is going to line up correctly with the angle. But if you've measured it right, it should line up correctly so that the side of the angle is meeting the side of the acorn. And that is where we are. And my pressing, I am, uh, I pressed these open. They could be pressed in. I press these to the side. I'm pressing these so, um, seams in between open. Uh, that seems to lay the flattest for me. Do what works for you. Um, so after I've made all the big ones, then I'm gonna move on and do the same thing with the medium, right? And I'm gonna do the same assembly line. I'm going to make one block first, make sure that it is the right size on everything. Um, the medium size blocks also get this extra piece put at the top. So I'm going to make all of those. And then I'm going to move on to the small ones. The same thing. I am putting all of my pieces on first. I'm sewing all four corners on. I'm checking that they're all correct and I don't have like too small here or, you know, bigs that's, it's all this way. After I sew them like this, then I will cut my corners off, press these open. I'm going to add my stem and uh, add the two pieces um, together after I've put the sides on, right? Sides on the bottom. And then that is going to make my little acorn, right? Then I'm adding my top and I'm adding my bottom piece um, because these are smaller, aren't they cute? Um, they need this extra sizing to fit in the row correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assembly line, do all of those. Uh, you can mix and match the colors as you like because I like to have like a, a logic that I'm sewing by. That's why I usually said, okay, every time I'm doing the darker brown on the bottom, I'm going to do the darker brown on the top. I'm going to make a mirror image of this. And the same with the um, this version with the, the linen and the caramel. I'm going to flip that. And then within my rows, you can mix them as much as you want within the rows, but I usually keep like two color combinations and it's a mirror image on the other side of my row. So if you look at this, like I'm gonna have the the uh, the moon uh, the moon and leaf print is here and down below it's also here, right? These this piece is this one here. This one with the caramel is the same here. Now when we move to the sides it's the flip version of it. So the caramel is now to the outside. This um, moon and leaves is to the outside and these pieces are flipped here. So that way I can kind of keep it mirrored and even, and I know that the prints are going to be evenly distributed around the quilt this way. You can mix them however you like. I just liked the um, kind of logical arrangement of them sort of mirroring each other. And I found it was easier for my brain to arrange them that way. Um, especially since this is a medallion quilt, I kind of wanted it to have a certain, you know, feeling of symmetry.